Good evening, everyone. How are you all? You guys can hear me properly, right? Good. All right. So, welcome to First Aid AMC Clinical. And as you know, that I'm Dr. Arsham. And tonight we have one of our other mentor with you today. So she is Dr. Cynthia Rahman, and she will be taking the class for tonight. So we will welcome her in a moment, but let me just discuss a little bit about the motive of tonight's session so that you understand from where we are coming. So this session is a part of your free two week session, as you already know. And I can see that many of our previous students are also here. So which means that they like the classes with Dr. Cynthia Rahman a lot, that even, even this is a free session, they don't want to miss it. And you will obviously find it out by her class tonight that how important this session it is for your exam. Because every week we take one of these sessions and all of this session will be taken by her. So this session is mainly focusing on recent important cases. So you do understand that how much important it can be because she's going to do role play with you about the topics which are super, super important for exam. I can't say enough how important it might be. And we only allow our course students to, to, to join these sessions. So it's a part of your course. So you will find out that this is a random role play session, which prepare you for almost any question that can appear in the exam. That doesn't mean that this is exam cages. It means that if you can do random sessions with her, it will boost up your confidence in a way that whatever questions come in your exam, you will be ready for it. So this does not have any, any format like, how I take classes, I have a format. I always do as a cluster wise. So you know what I am discussing. You know the topic, you know the subject, which means it's a pre-prepared, right? But the sessions with her will be totally different, which means that in your exam, you will get random cages, right? So there will be no format, there will be no cluster. So in here, you are going to learn the way, how to, how to do those cages, whatever cages come before your before your eyes, you will be ready for it. So initially, our students get a little bit difficult with these sessions because you are still very new. But trust me, within a month or so, you are going to love it. And when you will have more classes with me, you will learn the approaches. You will learn about the, the how, how to approach and how to take a history, how to do physical exam, everything you will understand. And then this these sessions becomes much easier for you. So don't bother about it. Come forward, do role play, do mistake, so that we can show you where you are doing the mistakes and you learn from mistakes, okay? So never ever hesitate to come for, your, for the role play sessions. And we always allow the new people to do the role play with us. So I can see that a lot of our previous students are here, but please, please make sure that allow the new candidates to do the role play with us for tonight because that, that's the way they will learn, okay? So just for tonight, this will be just for all the new students, all the new people who wants to do role play, we will first allow that. But if we, if we don't get anyone from new, then yes, previous doctors are also welcome to do role play, okay? So let's start and after the classes, class is done, then I will again come here and I will discuss with you about the course and if you guys have any questions about it. Now, we had like maybe a one week gap, right? From 30th November to 11th of December, this one, one week or 10 days gap was mainly for, for making sure that our course students get everything in their portal. But from now onwards, the two weeks free sessions will be in full rhythm. So there is another class tomorrow, as you can see in the schedule, that will be with me and we will discuss cardiology, okay? 
So don't forget to come in the in this free session so that you can understand what we are doing. And if you like the classes, then yes, you are welcome to join the session for the next five months. So I'm going to hand over this microphone to Dr. Cynthia, and she will she will go forward, and I will just stop my my screen as well. Dr. Cynthia, this is yours. Thank you. Um, hello, Dr. Ashan, and hello, Dr. Uh, hello, everyone. Hope all you are doing well. I'm Cynthia, and I will be with you for random role session. Uh, so let's start our session. First, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Uh, who uh, who is interested to do uh, play with me? Just uh, write your name in the chat box so that I can see. Um. Hi, Doctor Mabruka. Are you there? Yes, hello. Hi. Hi, hi, Dr. Uh, Cindy. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, so, this is your case, and I'm going to start two minute timer for you. Okay. Okay. Your time starts now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, you're going to start now. Uh, you are mm -hmm. going to start now. Okay, hello, uh, this is Mabruka Islam. I'm the attending doctor today. Um, how are you, Philip? Hello, doctor. I'm not feeling well, doctor. Mm -hmm. um, Philip, um, uh, I can understand from the note, I can see that <clears throat> you are not uh, feeling well. And uh, uh, don't worry, you are in safe hand, Philip. And um, please, uh, uh, if you try to open up uh, with me, whatever you are feeling at the moment, I'll try my best to help you out. Okay, Philip? <laughs> okay, doctor. And Philip, um, I might uh, ask you a few more private questions, but uh, I can reassure you that the conversation between you and me, it will remain confidential unless it will harmful for you and others. Is that all right, Philip? Okay. Okay. So, uh, Philip, could you please tell me in a brief, what do you mean by unwell? Dr. I'm so sick for the last few days. 
Mm -hmm. All right. And um, uh, um, how is the sickness? Doctor, I'm having repetitive cough. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not well, actually. Okay, sorry to hear that, Philip. And uh, 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 is the cough is uh, productive? Like, is it uh, with the flame or dry cough? It's a dry cough, doctor. Okay. And uh, any specific time for the cough? Like, in, is it a morning cough or night cough? No, there is no particular time. And sometimes it's productive as well. Okay. And uh, uh, with the cough, do you have any... Uh, runny nose or nose block? Uh, yeah, doctor, sometimes. Mm -hmm. And any uh, discharge from eye or ear? No. Okay, and any discharge from nose as well? No, doctor. Okay, any sore throat? Yes, doctor, I'm having sore throat. All right, and how, um, how bad is the sore throat? Uh, like, do you feel any um, any difficulty in swallowing? Uh, yes, doctor. Uh, sometimes I feel difficulty in swallowing, but um, I feel like it's just because of my cough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. And uh, have you noticed that is your, uh, with the cough, is there any chest pain? Sometimes. Okay. And any um, shortness of breath? Yeah, doctor, nowadays I feel more short of breath. Okay, so. Yes, sorry, and um, sorry, any shortness of breath? Yes, doctor. Um, and any racing of heart? No. Mm -hmm. Any tummy pain? No, doctor. Okay, any um, nausea, vomiting? No. Any diarrhea or lose uh, constipation? Uh, no, doctor. Okay. And uh, have you noticed any um, recent loss of weight, loss of appetite? Uh, loss of appetite, yes, doctor, because of my cough and uh, short of breath. Actually, I don't feel I'm hungry, but uh, loss of weight I didn't measure. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, mm, any lumps and bumps have you noticed? No. And um, any night sweat? Mm, no, doctor. Okay. Um, have you noticed any yellow discoloration of your body? Mm, no. Okay. And um, anyone, uh, does anyone tell you that you are getting pale? No. Are you feeling any tired or loss of energy? Yeah, doctor, I'm feeling tired nowadays. Mm -hmm. And um, how is the tiredness? Like, does it yeah, affecting your uh, activities or daily life? Um, I feel weak, doctor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sorry to hear that. And um, okay, uh, and Philip, um, some private question I'm going to ask you. Um, sorry for that. Are you uh, sexually active? Yes, doctor. And do you have a stable partner? Yes. Since how long you were with her? Mm, last two years. Two years. And um, for your preference, is it, um, no, sorry, is it a male or female? No, female. Okay. And are you practicing safe sex? Yes, doctor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any uh, similar uh, uh, kind of symptom by any chance to your partner as well? No. All right. And um, by any chance, um, uh, uh, oh, sorry, uh, uh, do you smoke? No, doctor. Do you drink alcohol? Um, socially. Okay. And you know the safe limits? Yeah. Any recreational medication? No. Okay. By any chance, have you shared uh, uh, any, any drug by IV? No, doctor. Okay. Any tattooing, piercing recently? No. Transfusion? Uh, no, doctor. Okay. So, Philip, I can see that you've been diagnosed uh, HIV one year back. How you are going with the treatment? Uh, it's okay, doctor. Mm -hmm. Are you regular with your medication? 
Sometimes I miss the medication, doctor. And may I know the reason? Um, actually, I um, I forget to take it. Sometimes I, I'm very busy at my work. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, by any chance, any financial issue? No. Okay, and uh, all right. Um, Okay, thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Philip, for your information. So, uh, Philip, from your information, um, I can see that mostly um, the reason of your uh, having this symptom is um, due to the, the seroconversion of the uh, HIV that you have uh, diagnosis one year back. And the cause is that, uh, that I found that you are not regular with your treatment. Are you with me so far? Yes, doctor. So, Philip, what happened? Uh, if you are not uh, take, if you don't take the medication regularly, because uh, these are actually structured according to the uh, disease and this is program in that way, this medication. So, if you are not taking uh, the medication regularly, uh, the virus will take upper hand uh, to your immune system. And that's actually uh, making your immune system down. And that might feel you uh, this kind of uh, symptom and this unwellness. Are you with me so far? Yes. Okay. And uh, mm, however, I'm also thinking some opportunistic infection that might happen in you because uh, if the immunity get, goes down, there are uh, several um, chance to get the body easily affected by the infection. And that's uh, exactly I can see that uh, you are having chest uh, infection at the moment. And uh, however, I also was thinking that it could be any um, any liver pro problem like the hepatitis or it could be any uh, tummy problem, any bowel problem. Uh, your time is up, doctor. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Philip. Okay. Uh, sorry okay, doctor. Doctor, for the baby's noise. Uh, that's okay. Um, a nice performance, Dr. Mabruka. Um, I think... Uh, um, your performance uh, was nice. Uh, most of the things you uh, try to cover, just a few things missed, that's okay. Uh, but otherwise, you have a nice structure. Uh, you already got the diagnosis, that's okay. So the point which you missed in here, um, patient actually coming here for repetitive chest infection, right? So few differential you need to think before starting your conversation. So, one of your differential, definitely, it might be pneumonia. So for the pneumonia, you need to ask a definitive question like cough, chest pain, you ask. Very important question is fever, which you miss. Yes, okay. I was distracted, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. So just try to make sure like uh, your task is only to take a history, explain the diagnosis. Yeah. So if you make a correct diagnosis, but which basis you are making correct diagnosis, definitely based on your history. So if you miss something, like sometimes, you know, examiner, uh, like um, you might not get proper marks in the history mm -hmm. or sometimes like predominant assessment area in the history. So I noticed some candidate also failed, only just uh, the history, they didn't take it well, that's why, yeah. okay? so. Try to cover all the important uh, differential diagnosis and their um, relevant question in the history, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, very good that you already picked that patient is not taking medication. So here patient is non-compliance with the HIV meds and patient also having opportunistic chest infection. So our most important diagnosis here is first, you should mention about opportunistic chest infection. That's your patient is suffering most. And because of the, like, it might be due to non-compliance of the medication and other reason you can mention, okay? But yeah. nice, okay? okay? So let's discuss the case. Um, 35 years old, Philip comes to see you with repetitive chest infection. He was diagnosed with HIV one year back. He's on retroviral, that is uh, anti-HIV um, treatment. Uh, and he is not feeling well. Your task is take a history, explain the diagnosis. Um, in this case, uh, for all the 
beginner candidate, I would say um, you need to follow the approach. So Dr. Arshan will discuss with you all the approach for medicine cases, especially medicine cases, you need to talk about history of presenting complaint, then think about some of the differential, then you need to talk about your patient past medical history, family history, surgical history, and uh, at the end, you can ask about all smoking, alcohol, uh, any drugs, any medication allergies, those things, okay? Um, there is no physical examination task in here. You have only two tasks in this case. So take a history. That means you need to spend a good amount of time by asking all important questions in here, okay? And your second task is explain the diagnosis. So... Patient history of presenting complaint here is repetitive chest infection. And already Steve mentioned that patient has a background history of HIV, okay? When you got too many time for reading, please think about all important differential regarding your case, okay? So here, repetitive chest infection on the background of HIV, right? So what could be your differential? Opportunistic infection, any infectious mononucleosis, HIV infection that is uh, like leading to AIDS, measles, any other STI infection, TB, but TB is not common in Australia, okay? So coming to the history, what I noticed, Dr. Mapruka's performance was really nice. Few things she just missed, I think because of that, like stress or like some other destruction. So, in the exam, you need to be very careful, okay? In here, did you notice, guys, in the stem, here nothing mentioned how long patient is feeling unwell, okay? So nowadays, you all know that there are two types of exam pattern, one online and the face-to-face. -face. But I, I heard that from 2023, most of the exam pattern will be on face-to-face, -face, okay? So for the face-to-face -face candidate, be careful about these things. On the online exam, you will get vital sign. So if vital sign not given, don't need to worry about it. But for the face-to-face -face exam, you have to ask to your examiner, examiner, may I know the vital sign or hemodynamic stability of my patient? That's important. Okay, because in your step, it doesn't mention how long your patient is feeling unwell. You are not sure either your patient is septic or not. Okay, that's why please make sure before starting your case, you are asking your examiner, if you are planning for face-to-face, -face, you are asking your examiner about hemodynamic stability. Okay, now coming to the history of presenting complaint here, HOPC is bad chest infection. So what do we mean by that? Do you have any cough, any chest pain? E patient mentioned like, yes, doctor, I'm having cough. Please ask details. So for the cough question, you should ask about um, either it's a dry cough or productive cough. Is it all the time or on and off? You should ask any aggravating relieving factor. Okay. Along with the cough, do you feel chest pain? Any fever along with it? Fever, very important, you should rule out pneumonia, okay? So for the fever, if yes, you should ask details, okay? Uh, is it coming and going or like constant? Did you measure the temperature? Did you take any tablet for that? And does it work, okay? Fever along with any chills, rigor, you should ask. Along with your chest pain, fever, cough, do you notice any sneezing, any difficulty in breathing? Very, very important. Okay, so all the associated feature is important or key point in here. Okay, uh, difficulty in swallowing. Dr. Mabruka asked me that. That's very important question because HIV patient, they are very prone to get candida infection. Okay, so you should ask about any difficulty in swallowing to rule out any candida infection. Asked about AIDS question. Patient is HIV positive. That doesn't mean that patient is having AIDS but you need to rule out either the disease is going to progress or not, okay? So AIDS question here, key point, because patient mentioned patient having, uh, patient uh, is having like repetitive chest infection. So ask about all the feature of AIDS. That means how about your bowel habit, any diarrhea, any blood in it, 
any rash, any infection, any recent fever, any lumps, any bumps, any loss of weight, loss of appetite. Okay, those all are your age-related question. History of recent traveling to overseas, you should ask. Sexual history. So you all notice that when Dr. Mabruka asks me about my personal question, she gives uh, me confidentiality statement. That's really important, okay? So before asking that private question, you should ask like, Philip, I'm going to ask you very personal and sensitive question. Just bear with me. Those conversation will be confidential, okay? So are you sexually active? And do you have a stable partner? You should ask how long your patient having a stable partner? Um, like, do you practice safe sex? By any chance, multiple partner history before, okay? And history of like, have you ever been diagnosed with any sexually transmitted infection? Uh, HIV related question, you should ask about any blood transfusion recently or other. But honestly, patient already diagnosed with HIV, okay? So if you notice your time is limited, you can skip blood transfusion, tattooing, those questions because patient already diagnosed with HIV positive. But important thing is you should ask about all the AIDS question, okay? Now come to the medication question. Here medication patient is taking antiretroviral therapy. So you should ask about which medication you are on, how long, any side effect, when was the last visit with your specialist, any concern shared at that time. So in the step, if you notice any of the case, patient mentioned that patient is taking any medication, please make sure you are asking this go. Okay. I all um I am telling all my students previously as well, like disco is a mnemonic for the medication. So D for duration, how long you are taking that medication, I for indication, why you are taking this medication, S for side effect, did you notice any side effect for that, C for um, compliance, are you taking it on a regular basis or did you miss your pill, you should ask, and O for any over-the-counter medication, okay? Any past medical history, HIV patient, uh, patient, still mention that patient, uh, is having HIV, patient can also have other medical condition as well. So please make sure you are asking about other past medical history. I think Dr. Mabruka didn't ask me other past medical history, okay? Uh, because patient might have asthma, COPD, those three things, okay? That could be like exacerbation of asthma, exacerbation of COPD as well. So please make sure you are asking those past medical history. Now coming to the PV, PV not your task in here, but if PV will come, you can ask about like general, okay? And I'm pretty sure Dr. Arshan will discuss with you already the PV uh, format, okay? Now coming to the diagnosis. So my most probable diagnosis here is the pneumonia, okay? Most likely it's an opportunistic infection. You can mention pneumocystic carini, pneumonia, those things, but honestly, like based on the history, like it would be safe. You are just mentioning it's a pneumonia because the pneumonia, there are like lots of classification. Um, and we can uh, tell the patient for sure when we are having our investigation report in hand. Okay. So at this moment, just mention like pneumonia, most likely opportunistic infection. Okay. And which is like one type of fungal infection in the lung uh, because this is the more common for the uh, HIV patient and people uh, who are having weak immune system, okay? Uh, and you can mention that uh, many people live with that fungal infection in their lung without any issues. But people who are having weak immune system, uh, these fungus uh, may take upper hand and that can cause repetitive chest infection. And from the history, I notice you are not compliant with the medication. So that could be one of the reasons, okay? So at this moment, you will need to be treated right now because your immune system is low. You are having fever, chest pain, short of breath, all the symptoms of pneumonia. 
and uh, I'm going to admit you in the hospital. But I mean here, management not your task, but if management will come, you can mention about admission and all the IV antibiotics, okay? So that's the case. Your task only history and explain the diagnosis. So those all are the explanation, how you are going to prevent for the opportunistic infection. Those things, I put it in the slide because if in case management will come, you need to explain everything, okay? Okay, any question for this case? In this patient, they have given the ARV. Patient is receiving ARV. So should we ask about the viral load, something like that? Uh, in this type of case, like patient is receiving, uh, are you talking about antiretroviral therapy? Yes. Okay. And uh, what was the task? No. Should we ask the uh, viral load, like antiretroviral therapy, just like maybe viral load is decreased uh, so that he's having infection there, right? Like, Okay, in this case, uh, you can ask about viral load, but many patients, they are not out of their investigation. They can only uh, tell you like previous investigation was normal or like abnormal. That's why I'm telling you guys, like uh, in the history, when you notice patient is taking any medication, you should ask about when was the last visit with your specialist, any concern she had that time. So, if his specialist visit patient is regular with uh, his specialist and patient um, like last visit was uneventful, patient may become like, like normal, okay? So you don't need to ask specifically about viral load, but so, if- So in the history, we can add one more uh, question, like are you taking regular ARB or not? We can ask or not, this is my concern, like because why they give that point? Patient is taking ARB. Definitely you have to ask. That's why I put in my slide. You should okay. ask details about medication. Okay, thank you. Thank okay. you. Uh, sad mean smoking alcohol and other drugs a uh, history okay so let's move to the next case uh, who will be the next one You can ask about any vaccine are you taking uh, against HIV? You can ask, but that's okay. Uh, most important thing, if management will come, you need to talk about vaccine. Otherwise in history, in this case especially, you can ask, that's okay. So who will be the next one? Dr. Imad, are you there? Okay. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. So this is your case and your two minutes starts now. Yeah.
sorry, I just have a question. I don't know how to text to everybody because I'm happy to participate in the cases, but I don't know how to do it. Sorry for that. Um, just put your name on the chat box. And what? Uh, put your name on the chat box. Um, did you find the chat box? No. It just stopped on your Zoom uh, system. Okay. Uh, Dr. Ahmad, you can start. Uh, good evening, Tracy. My name is Imad, one of the doctors here. How are you tonight? Doctor, I'm okay, but I'm concerned about my daughter. Uh, yeah, I can see, my know, that you you, are, uh, you you'd like to talk about the Gardasil vaccination. Is this uh, is this right? Mm. Yeah, doctor, I want to know more about the vaccine, but I'm really worried, like, is the vaccine is really important to give my daughter? Because I think uh, it will just encourage um, her early sexual life. What do you think, doctor? Uh, okay, uh, Tracy, uh, before we go further, I just uh, want to know, what, what do you feel about vaccines in general? Do you have any problem with other vaccines or any bad? No, yeah. other vaccines are fine. Mm -hmm. Or any, uh, okay, that's all right. So regarding the Gardasil, vaccine it's a new vaccine relatively new vaccine uh, which was developed here in australia a few years ago it guards about a bug called the uh, human babyloma virus which is responsible uh, which is which is mainly responsible for the uh, cancer of the neck of the womb in women that's why uh, the government is now uh, giving this vaccine widely to girls at uh, at the start of their teen years, so as to uh, guard against the cancer of the neck of the womb. Uh, so, uh, uh, there is no evidence that taking the Gardasil vaccine will encourage people uh, to, 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 do, uh, uh, to do early sex. If, if, if you're asking about this, there's no evidence to support that. And uh, there is very strong evidence that it will guard uh, against the uh, virus that causes the cancer of the neck of the womb. So, uh, uh, is this all right? Uh -huh. What is Gardasil vaccine, doctor? Uh, sorry, Tracy, can you repeat that? I couldn't hear you. Um, actually, I want to know more about the vaccine. Okay. Uh, oh. uh, okay. Uh, as, uh, as I said, it's uh, a vaccine against the human babyloma virus. So uh, this virus is usually transmitted by uh, sexual intercourse, but, and uh, when 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 the teenage girl receives this uh, vaccine, there is very low chance uh, that, that that she can con uh, get the virus. Uh, uh, through sexual intercourse, it doesn't give as as most of vaccines. It doesn't give hundred percent protection, but it gives a uh, very high rate of uh, protection against the virus. And this virus, uh, they found that it is responsible for the cancer of the neck of the womb. Uh, what, what, what do you need to know more about? Uh, I will give you a written uh, material about the about the vaccine. Uh, usually, uh, girls are vaccinated about the age 13 to 15 years, and there is a vaccination program in the school. 
Uh, Tracy, uh, are you following me? Yes, doctor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doctor, I think this vaccine is just, uh, it will encourage our sexual life. Is it so? Uh, Tracy, uh, why do you think so? Uh, what do you think that? Any, uh, as I said, there is no, no, no evidence to support that it will encourage the uh, sexual habit in, in young people. But rather, it will protect them if, if, they, if they decide to start their sexual life, it will protect them against this virus. Okay. Okay, Trace. Anything that I need to know, doctor? Uh, you want to stop? Yeah. I'd... Okay, that's okay, Dr. Rahman. Um, very good that you came forward um, and you, you are really interested to do role play. Uh, so this case is a bit different. I'll discuss definitely. Uh, just a little advice for you. Um, do you have any study partner? I don't yet. Okay, so for the clinical exam, most important thing to have is a very good and uh, consistent study partner, okay? Because like if you are having a study partner, you can practice role play as much as you can. And there is no alternative way apart from role play for this um, exam, okay? Yeah. So try to do role play as much as you can, okay? And uh, if you are following the format, uh, doing the role play so that you can also understand what point you need to mention to pass the exam and uh, it will also help you to manage with time okay so let's discuss the case uh, you are a gp and your next patient is a 42 years old uh, mrs tracy wants to know more about cardacil vaccine her 15 years old daughter will receive vaccine in the school and she's really worried about it because she thinks that it will encourage early sexual life. So your task is counsel about Gardasil vaccine and respond to your patient inquiry. Yeah. Now, uh, this case, fully counseling. Uh, you need to uh, put more consideration regarding your approach as well. And just make sure that you are not going to vomit all the information regarding Gardasil vaccine, rather than you should make a very good rapport between you and your role player, okay? It's really important to pass this type of counseling case. Now, uh, come to the case. Uh, so your approach, like different, different um, candidate uh, used to follow their own format. Uh, so you can mention, hi, uh, Mrs. Tracy, I'm Dr. X. Uh, I'll be uh, looking after you today. Uh, in this way, you can introduce yourself. Um, and from the note, I understand that you have come uh, to discuss regarding the vaccine. Before starting our conversation, um, just I would like to know, do you have any specific concerns so that I can address, okay? Uh, in this case, you can ask your patient by open-ended question, like how much do you know about the vaccine, okay? And have you ever heard about any um, human papilloma virus infection? So basically the Gardasil vaccine, in this counseling case, uh, vaccine counseling session, make sure that you are following few points, okay? So one point is you need to introduce the vaccine, why we are going to give the vaccine, the importance of the vaccine, indication, you can mention dose, side effect, and contraindication, and at the end, you can address your patient concern. So those few points, if you mention regarding vaccine counseling case, I'm pretty sure you will not miss anything and definitely you will pass, okay? So here, introduction of the vaccine, that means you should give your patient a little bit about, a little bit idea about the vaccine. So it's an inactive form of the same bug when they are injected into the body and they form the antibodies. And you know, they will make a memory cell in the body. 
So in the future, if the bug will attack in the body, already we have the antibodies. So our body already, um, our body is ready to fight against the infection. And Gardasil vaccine, um, the aim to give the Gardasil vaccine to prevent human papillomavirus infection. It doesn't promote any early sexual life, okay? Um, Gardasil vaccine is effective against like four type of HPV you can mention. So there are a different type of HPV infection, but few of the types uh, that can cause cervical cancer, which is definitely like uh, life-threatening. So you can mention like that human papilloma virus infection is transmitted basically by sexual intercourse. And uh, the idea to give the vaccine uh, especially to young girls between 90 to 26, uh, because most of them hasn't started their sexual life yet and uh, or haven't been infected. So if we are going to give them the vaccine, they will get benefit, okay? Even we can give vaccine people who are sexually active as well, uh, but like giving the vaccine after 27 years of old, there is actually no benefit. Uh, so dose and the route, uh, there are three dose, but two dose, um, it can give optimal protection and three dose is the best, okay? And it's part of the school immunization program. So first two dose, we are going to give four weeks apart. And from the second to third dose, between 12 weeks apart. So within six months, uh, we are going to give that vaccine. Okay, and it will be administered by IM rule. Okay, um, absolute contraindication of the human papilloma virus vaccine, it might cause severe allergic reaction, but that things are very rare. Okay, possible side effect, if I mentioned like any injection side pain, swelling can happen with it. Now, there are, uh, for MC clinical exam, there are few type of vaccine counseling case. Gardasil vaccine counseling case is one of them. Make sure that any of the vaccine counseling case, you are talking about possible side effect. Your patient has the right to know the possible side effect and how you are going to manage that one. So possible side effect, if we are going to give that vaccine through the injection, definitely injection side pain can happen, swelling, redness. But it's a very minor side effect and uh, you need to take rest. And if you are taking Panadol, it will settle down, okay? Coming to the concern, your patient has like two concerns. One concern is your patient uh, thinks that it will promote early sexual life. You should say, look, it doesn't encourage girls to start their sexual life. Rather than uh, it will protect to get any human papilloma virus infection, which can cause cervical cancer. But keep remembering one thing, Gardasil vac vaccine doesn't protect against any uh, STI, okay? So the main aim to give the vaccine to protect them against cervical cancer and genital wars. But sometimes like vaccine, it doesn't give 100% protection as well. That's why all girls need to be vaccinated and like when they are going to start their sexual life, all girls need to be screened for cervical screening test, okay? Usually it will start from 25 years of age. But people um, who already started their sexual activity earlier uh, there is, you can start cervical screening between 20 to 24, according to the Australian guideline, okay? So this vaccine, first two dose is free of cost, according to the National Immunization Program. But third dose, uh, you must to have pain, okay? Pregnant women, Patient might ask you, doctor, pregnant women can get that vaccine? You can say no, but after giving birth, they can get the vaccine, okay? And as I mentioned, it is no longer beneficial after the age of 27 years. Now, so for the vaccine counseling case, you need to follow the format. If you're following format or structure, it, you will not miss anything. So the indication of the vaccine, 
we are going to give to prevent cervical cancer for the female. Uh, and this vaccine usually give a, uh, is given between 12 to 13 years um, at school. And people who prefer like uh, men, sex with men, also they can get the vaccine and people who are having weakened immunity. Um, other thing is that, as I mentioned, like this is uh, three dose of vaccine, but first two dose is free of cost. And uh, now the gap between first two dose, four weeks interval, okay? Side effect, please mention about the side effect because it's a key point. And uh, um, what is human papillomavirus? Your patient might ask you, so you should tell your patient that human papillomavirus is a very common virus that uh, that can spread through skin to skin contact. And that is the main reason for cervical cancer or any genital wards. Okay. Uh, many of the human papillomavirus, um, it doesn't normally cause any symptoms, but you know, sometimes uh, like it can cause abnormal cell changes and that leads to cervical cancer. Okay, uh, so that's the information you need to give your patient to pass the exam, that's all. Um, so for the vaccine counseling cases, make sure you are talking about why we are going to give that vaccine. Little bit talk regarding the vaccine, how it works, if type of permits, dose, um, administration, uh, side effect, and all other uh, concern you need to address. Sometimes like uh, parents can ask you, doctor, boy can get it, you can say, Yes, boy can be uh, uh, getting that vaccine, but it's not included in the immunization program. Any question for this case? Uh, what concern can the patient have? As I mentioned, there are two concerns basically patient will ask you. One is like uh, patient uh, thinks that it will promote early sexual life. That is one concern. Another concern is pregnant women can get the vaccine or not. Uh, they can get it um, in their reproductive life, but as I mentioned, it is no longer beneficial after 27 years. Okay. So move to the next case. Uh, next case, Dr. Um, Payman, are you there?
Dr. Peming, are you there? Okay. Uh, Dr. Mahalakshmi. Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah. Hello, doctor. Hi. Uh, this is your case. I'm good. Um, okay, Dr. Payman, uh, you can perform the next case. Uh, excuse me, doctor, I have a doubt. Mm -hmm. um, so here the patient is not responding to the antibiotics. So uh, uh, the management doesn't want to uh, go with the further treatment, right? Mm, what could be the management for this case? You need to talk about it. Okay, so the decision now not to treat is, uh, this is the decision of the hospital, right? Uh, do do you get the stem or not? Yeah, yeah I, I got it. Okay. You want to start? Uh, yes, Doc. Okay, let's start. Okay. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Roderick. Uh, I'm Dr. Mahalakshmi, one of the RMOs in the hospital. Uh, I can see from uh, the notes that uh, your mother, uh, your mother is having chronic uh, uh, lung disease and uh, she has been admitted in the hospital. So uh, I'm here to discuss the uh, her diagnosis with you. So uh, as, uh, as we have been treating your mother, uh, she is not responding to the, uh, uh, so far, uh, the treatment which is done. Uh, I'm so sorry to tell them, uh, but, uh, uh, your mother uh, has signed for uh, no resuscitation 
that means uh, have you ever heard about this uh, dnr do you have any idea about it no doctor what's that actually uh, dnr is nothing but whenever a patient is uh, whenever a pa uh, whenever a person dies or like uh, he his uh, heart stops uh, uh, it's the patient's uh, um it's a patient's uh, the patient uh, if a patient signs for a dnr uh, the patient seeks that he should not be he or she should not be resuscitated uh, he should not be put on any additional uh, support so as your mother has signed for that it means that uh, she should not be kept on any ventilator for any further support uh did you have an idea about it when did your mother sign for dnr no doctor all right uh, so now your mother's condition is uh, critical so uh, and she is not responding to the antibiotics and uh, uh, the medical treatment so uh, yeah do you want me to call someone else or uh, you want to uh, no want want to... To... okay but i want to know more about it okay uh, why my mom condition is critical and why you are not going to treat uh, uh, with the antibiotic okay so uh, since uh, your mother is having this condition for a long time and because of her age she is not responding to any of the drugs uh, to uh, that are like anti that are actually used usually like antibiotics or uh, uh, any steroids so usually the patients will respond but in your mother's case because of her age uh, and uh, she is not responding so at this point of time at this point we uh, uh, there is no other like uh, treatment other than putting her on ventilator but she is not uh, because she has signed for dnr uh, we cannot do that so what could so, be the next step um well uh, from here i think uh, uh, uh maybe we should uh, i think uh, yeah uh, there is actually no medical treatment beyond this uh, uh, let's see um you want to continue or you want to stop um maybe uh, yeah we'll uh, treat her symptomatically uh, we'll give her uh, uh, some physiotherapy and all that but uh, uh, and let's see if she is uh, able to respond to the uh, if she's responding or will uh, treat her only symptomatically from here and do you have any more concerns about this anything else that i need to know doctor um yeah nothing okay thanks okay you want to stop doctor uh, yeah okay yes yeah, stop that's okay doctor uh, is it mah i'm so sorry i could spell your name like yeah is it yeah maha is fine doctor okay yeah maha is okay so dr maha nice try this type of case uh, you need to first he start with the um, topic so patient actually uh, diagnosed with cbd like if you um, explain 
patients on what is COPD and why patient is not, not responding well, uh, it would be more easier for your patient son. Okay, always think okay. that your patient, patient relatives, they are non-medical person. So you need to explain details what's the condition, why the treatment is not responding, those things. DNR form is do not resuscitate. it. Uh, you need to explain it furthermore. And your task is also management and counseling. What could be the next steps when all the medication, all other things is not responding well? So definitely next step will be decided by the specialists, but uh, just a rough idea you can give about the palliative care or end of life care, okay? Okay, so um, I'll discuss the case and uh, um, I know here like most of the students are beginner but few of the students I noticed they are the uh, previous student as well. So for the mm -hmm. beginner, um, I know it will uh, be difficult initially to get the case but honestly this is the case how you will get in your exam, okay? And in your exam, one more thing I want to tell you guys if you get the same in your exam, nobody will explain you what is the task. So to understand the task is another your job, okay? So if your task in the main exam, you will not get specifically like take a history physical examination. Uh, like they are going to give you rephrasing the sentence. So make sure that you are understanding the task and according to the uh, task, you are asking appropriate question to your patient because examiner for the face-to-face -face candidate, examiner will be there, but they are not going to explain what thing you have to do, okay? To understand mm -hmm. the task or to understand the system is your another job. Okay. So let's discuss the case. You are an RMO in a metropolitan hospital. You are going to see a son uh, of Mrs. Grace, 85 years old patient. The patient has chronic COPD, recurrent hospital admission. And patient already uh, like uh, made a sign for DNR and no ventilatory support. Uh, the consultant assisted her and asked you to um, talk with the son, Mr. Rodri. The decision is now not to treat her as she is in terminal, uh, terminal illness and patient had 24 hours antibiotic corticosteroid. Uh, that doesn't work actually. So the task is discussed with the son regarding the diagnosis management and counseling for that. This case is solely, solely counseling case and approach really matters a lot in this case. So make sure that uh, during the conversation, uh, you will show the empathy to the son as well, okay? Because this is like really sensitive case. Um, um, so you can mention like, um, hi, um, I'm one of the RMO in this hospital. Uh, how are you doing, uh, Mr. Rodrigue? Um, do you know anything about your mom and how much do you know about your mom condition? Um, I'm here to help you and I'm here to address all of your concerns, okay? So how much do you know about your mom condition, okay? In here, uh, so let's start from the beginning. You know that your mom being diagnosed with a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease for a long time. So basically it's a kind of obstructive ERO disease which is generally progressive and irreversible in nature, okay? Like in the past, she had been managed well, but like over the period of time, uh, like uh, her symptoms is deteriorating and the condition now has been complicated, unfortunately, okay? So in COPD, there are a few states of this disease but I think your mom is suffering with a severe or the terminal stage of the COPD, okay? And that is this, people, uh, they are having increased risk of developing respiratory infection, heart issues, lung cancer, those things, okay? Um, at this moment, your mom got severe lung infection and that lung infection, basically any infection which is caused by the bug, we are going to treat with the antibiotic. 
So we already gave your mom to the antibiotic, but unfortunately, these antibiotics are not helping anymore. I'm so sorry to tell you that. We tried a steroid as well, uh, which is another good medication for COPD. It also like uh, it's not responding as well. So it seems like this infection has spread to the blood and the other organ. What could be the complication? If the infection has spread to the blood and the other organ, it can cause serious complication, very difficult to control, and it may end up with multi-organ failure and like finally or eventually lead to death. Okay, what, what is the like risk factor in this scenario? Because your mom, 85 years, being elderly, low immunity, might also lead to this uh, disseminated infection. Now, you know that your mom already signed DNA, DNR form. Do you have any idea what is DNR form? So it is basically do not resuscitate order that tells the doctor or any healthcare professional not to attempt any CPR or defib if the person's heart is stops beating. Okay, and that's the written documentation. Uh, in here, actually, um, as your mom already not responding the medication, that means last stage of the terminal illness, uh, you know, like CPR uh, is not very likely helpful for this type of condition. So the management is, uh, now we have decided to put her on palliative care. Okay, what is palliative care? This means that um, it's not a cure, but our main aim is to make sure she has no pain, no breathing difficulty, and to rest peacefully, okay? And our aim should be to make sure that she will not suffer with, like, till the end. So we have palliative care specialist, palliative care nurse, social worker to help you and your mom. And um, like if anybody or any of your family member wants to stay with her, that will be best. Because you know, sometimes like patient needs company so that patient cannot feel that she is in isolated, okay? Um, as I mentioned, like uh, we are going to make sure that she's not any pain, not any breathing difficulty, and uh, she's resting peacefully, okay? So anything you want to know in this situation, in this way, you can ask. Um, so the key point in here, as I mentioned, is fully counseling session. So empathy must, and uh, you need to talk about uh, DNR, why we cannot proceed for any CPR in case of heart stops beating or those things you need to mention and the management. So the next step would be the palliative care. So the main aim for the palliative care uh, quality of life, that means like uh, um, the, uh, just comfort of the life, sorry. The main aim for the palliative care to provide the comfort of the life. So she makes sure that she has no pain, no breathing difficulty, those issues, okay? Okay, uh, little bit information for the beginner. Um, you might know about the exam process for the clinical, uh, online and the face-to-face. -face. So online exam, you will not get any examiner in front of you, okay? You will get only role player. So if you don't understand the case, nobody will explain you. As I mentioned, it's your job to understand this team and it's your job to understand the task as well. So when your eight minute starts, that means it starts. And uh, if you're not understanding this team, not understanding the task, like honestly, nobody cares. 
time will go and your remaining will finish. That's the thing. For face to face exam, you will get examiner um, with you and definitely role player. But again, like examiner will just check your ID and uh, if physical examination will be your task, uh, he or she will just give you the physical examination finding. Okay. Uh, so that's the thing. That's why um, my advice for you guys, uh, have a study partner, uh, not one. My suggestion would be like one or two, at least three study partner. Try to do role play as much as you can and try to read like all the previous cases, okay? Because like nobody knows um, which case will come in the next day. So just try to perform and try to be familiar with more cases, which is frequently coming with the clinical. Okay, who will be the next? Yeah, next will be Dr. Perryman. Hello, doctor, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. Uh, just a sec, any question for the previous case, guys? I think no. And so let's move to the next one. Um, okay, may I, may I uh, add something to the previous case, please? Yes. Uh, thank you for your explanation because I was working in the hospital um, for some time. Uh, you need to know about the uh, patient preference. So, it's very, very important, and it's very uh, likely that you can find it in the uh, patient history, especially if the patient is uh, a regular patient of the hospital. So you may find it easily. That's something that I just wanted to add. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh... This is your case and you will get too many time for ready. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'm ready. Uh, you still have one minute, 15 seconds. That's okay. You want to start? Hey, Penny. I'm Payman, one of the doctors in here. And uh, I can see from the notes that you have come from the overseas holidays and feel a little bit tired. Can you tell me a little bit more about it, please? Yes, doctor, for a couple of days, um, I'm uh, really feeling unwell. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, Penny, just to tell you something that whatever you say is going to be still uh, between you and me. 
unless it's going to harm anybody else. But it's going to be between you and me. So just feel free to talk to me freely, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, in my notes, you said that you, uh, you're taking heroin, right? Yes, doctor. Okay. Can we uh, get more about it and can we say that how you feel tired? Can you tell me how it started and how it uh, has been all the time, off and on, and all of those things, please? Yes, doctor. Like last few days, as I mentioned, I'm not feeling well, but I feel tired. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all the time. It's not all the time, sorry? It's all the time. It's all the time. And it happened about uh, two or three days? Yeah, doctor, last uh, one week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, by any chance, you have any uh, history of this before? You experienced this before? No, doctor. Okay. Now, um, and you doesn't feel anything like feverish or anything like that? I feel fever, doctor. Ah, you feel fever. Any lumps, bumps, or any uh, any kind of rash? No. Okay. Uh, Penny, I just want to ask you a question, some questions maybe. It's going to be a little bit personal. Uh, excuse me for that. Uh, can I ask you for your uh, sexual previous, please? Normal. Sorry? Normal preference, doctor. Uh, okay. Now, and uh, you never had this heroin before? No, this is for the first time I took it. How did it come? Sorry? How did it come? How, how it was the first time? Yeah, it was the first time with my friend. I took the heroin doctor because, uh, as I mentioned, like I went for holiday to overseas. Mm -hmm. I took it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, Meantime, do you have any uh, kind of feeling of dizziness or somehow like giddiness or anything like that? Any heartbeat or anything like heart racing? Uh, no, doctor. Mm -hmm. And uh, have you ever had been in any kind of uh, medical condition before? like a diabetes or any heart condition? No. And uh, by any chance you have anything like uh, thinking about um, being life not worthy or anything? Sorry for asking that. No, doctor. Okay, great. Now, uh, I just need to... Uh, check that if your uh, vital signs are okay, is it okay with you? Uh, yeah, doctor. Okay, great. Now, um, you know that when uh, we're checking that, it's because, as you said, you're feverish, and you told me that it's uh, always high. So I need to know that how your vital signs are okay. And if they're okay, then we can uh, continue with that. Okay, doctor. Okay. Now, any tummy pain, any shortness of breath, any headache or anything? Uh, no, doctor. Um, sometimes short of breath, sometimes I feel palpitation. Mm -hmm. Visual dis disturbance, anything? No. Headache? Mm, no, doctor. Okay. Shortness of breath. You told me about the shortness of breath. How come? Uh, how is that? Is it with coughing or anything you pick it up? Uh, 
Cough, sometimes Dr. Dry cough. Mm -hmm. And you don't bring anything up, right? No, doctor. Okay. Uh, so by any chance you feel tired when you walk in a long distance? Yes, Maybe I like... feel tired. Mm -hmm. I never had any kind of heart issues as you told me before. No. Mm, okay. So, uh, Penny, by any chance you had any other uh, kind of lung injuries like traumas or anything like that? No. Any past medical histories of lung issues like asthma or anything like that? No, doctor. Do you smoke? No. Um, alcohol? On and off, doctor. Okay. And any other thing like that, uh, any other the heroin that you told me that you used before, only once, any other recreational medication? No. Okay. Now, uh, Penny, have you ever had any... Uh, sorry, because Penny is a woman and you told me he, okay? Now I just need to ask other questions. Anyway, uh, if Penny is a woman, uh, Penny, do you have any discharge or anything? Uh, did I mention Penny is a woman? Okay. Uh, have you ever engaged in any kind of unprotected sex? Mm, no, doctor. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you have a uh, safe sex relationship in before? Uh, yes, doctor. Great, great, great. Now, uh, I need to ask my examiner about some of the examinations that I, that some of the results that I need to know. Is that okay, okay. with you, Penny? Yes, doctor. Um, sorry, your time's up. Um, so, Dr. Payman, your time's up. Okay. What's your research in this case? Well, uh, the most important thing is that I'm thinking about pneumonia mm -hmm. and I'm thinking about the HIV. Uh, but the point is, as I said, Penny is a name of a woman, and uh, it says about he. That's the something that okay. uh, so, somehow somehow mislead me. Sorry for that. But no, yeah. actually, uh, Penny uh, is not a woman. Penny is he, and. No hard and mention. I'm pretty sure that Penny is a woman. Oh, okay. Penny, anyway, you, anyway, but I'm I'm I'm, th I'm thinking case, about yeah. I'm thinking about uh, nomocytosis actually. Okay, that's okay. Yeah. Um. So the history is um. I think like yeah, you took a nice history. Um. Yeah. Most of the question you try to ask that's nice, but mm, always remember about the time because the exam time is really limited and if you cannot manage with time like you know that um, so pass would be really difficult otherwise like history is really nice a uh, few things you missed and a few things i need to point out so that you can improve um in here when you notice like uh, patient uh, patient feels fever you should dig more okay for the clinical I know you You are practicing doctor in Australia. I am also practicing doctor in here. But as um, I know the difference between the um, what we are actually practicing in our hospital and how we are going to manage in the exam, that's a little bit different because, you know, exam, uh, you need to ask like, important, important, all the things actually to pass the case. But in the hospital, the practice is a little bit different. That's why I'm uh, trying to just tell you one thing. Um, if your patient mentioned about the fever, mention about how long 
and did you measure the temperature did you take any medicine for that is it on and off or constant because it will gives you idea another thing is that uh, i notice you are asking like multiple question uh, at a time so for the clinical it will be better if you are asking like only two question at a time okay otherwise like low there will not give you the answer okay um and few question you missed i will point out um, while i'm going to explain okay uh, so this case you are a gp 29 years old penny came with complaint of feeling unwell he returned from holiday overseas where he took heroin so task is history p fee differential diagnosis okay so in here feeling of unwell is really very vague complaint could be many thing okay so the history uh, when you are thinking about that two minute please think about all the uh, infection related thing okay and patient recently returned from the holiday overseas um, and they mention where he took heroin so those each and every sentence is really important because it will give you the clue to reach your most likely diagnosis and differentiate okay in here so introduction confidentiality uh, dr payment gave me confidentiality at the beginning that was really nice his introduction was also nice okay so you should ask open ended question what do you mean by feeling unwell okay and could you please tell me what exactly happened in the trip so patient basically went to the trip did the party with a friend and took heroin for the first time and uh, did you guys all notice dr payman already asked me those question okay but what he missed which is very very important that is he didn't ask me how you took heroin okay either is the iv or anything if iv you should ask any sharing of needle which is the key point in this case okay so those question he didn't ask uh have you ever used it before patient already mentioned no that's the first time so okay and after that do you notice you feel tired the symptoms getting worse what symptoms do you have exactly other activities did you do during the trip especially like uh, um any tattooing piercing you can ask any other uh, street food and bottled water you should ask okay are you sexually active and are you practicing safe sex that is important uh, how long do you have a stable partner um, by any chance any multiple partner history you should ask regarding the tiredness how long okay do you feel tired all the day or like any specific time of the day you should ask about any skin color changes like pale yellow color how about your urine and bowel habit um dr payment missed that important question as well okay you should ask about all the flu like illness to rule out hiv that is any lumps bumps any like coughing sneezing sore throat uh p and poo definitely and also you should ask about any recent loss of weight loss of appetite any tummy pain if yes you should dig more if not just skip that one okay any fever yes fever positive so please ask details which is positive dig more okay chest pain palpitation chest may chest pain you will get positive negative like it depends palpitation sometimes your patient uh, might uh, like palpitation short of breath yes patient feels short of breath so please dig more are you using extra pillows nowadays how much you can walk without getting short of breath you should ask to rule out any heart failure question you should ask about any pedal edema related question uh, so you will get idea so here pedal edema also positive okay sexual history as i mentioned ask those question in addition any nausea vomiting any bowel habit urine question all are negative okay how about your general health do you have any other past medical surgical history asthma smoking other drugs other street drugs you need to ask okay 
PFE, physical examination from the examiner, physical examination from the examiner head to toe, but time is limited. You should put more focus which positive finding you got in the history. So general appearance, definitely vital sign. You should ask about vital sign, which vital sign is important, heart rate and the temperature. Temperature here 39.4, okay? Any pallor, jaundice, lymph node, you should ask. Respiratory examination, you should ask about bilateral ear entry equal is there any added sound any crackles so here bivasal crackles positive okay cardiovascular examination you should ask uh, can i appreciate any heart sound uh, like dual heart sound audible any added sound any murmur any pericardial rub so here heart sound dual audible but you can appreciate there is a pansystolic murmur and that murmur radiates to axilla and there is also pedal edema positive Okay, when you come to the abdomen examination, you will get positive findings about hepatosplenomegaly. Okay, but that is non tender. Uh, urine dipstick test, blood sugar, all are negative. So, based on that finding, positive history, positive physical examination, what could be your important differential? Based on that, the number one differential it should be infective endocarditis and uh, associated with heart failure because you will get positive fever, short of breath, palpitation, all those things along with heart sound positive, okay? And all the heart failure signs symptom, bivasal crackles, petal edema, you'll get it. Other differential, so differential diagnosis, most likely you have infective endocarditis causing secondary heart failure. Okay, it happens when infection uh, or bug enter into the blood and cause infection of the inner lining of the heart. In your case, that is you shared needles and it might be the source of the infection and it has affected your valve of the heart as well. Okay, other possibilities, you need to give all the differentials. So other possibilities, it might be hepatitis B, C, D, H, I, V all the needle sharing related infection, okay? So hep B, C, D, HIV, travel related infection, you can mention like it might be dengue, malaria, typhi, like typhoid, STI, those things you can mention, okay? Because we haven't done any investigation based on the history and physical examination, most probable diagnosis you need to give. Other causes, it might be cholecystitis, cholangitis, but those are less likely. Okay. Uh, yes, Dr. Hiba, you are right. Definitely in this case, the previous case and this case quite similar stem. If stem like doesn't mention how long patient is feeling unwell, please ask hemodynamic stability for the face-to-face -face exam. Okay. Face to face format, same. Your task will be history, physical examination, finding from the examiner, differential diagnosis. For the face-to-face -face format, when you finished history taking, you need to move to your examiner, ex excuse your patient, mention that um, I finished history taking, just give me a minute, I'll talk to my examiner and we'll be back, okay? So move to your patient, uh, move to your examiner and ask examiner, can I appreciate physical examination finding? So I'm going to have a look head to toe, but I'm going to put more focus on general appearance, vital signs, those things you need to mention, okay? And Dr. Arshan will discuss your physical examination finding format with you, okay?
In face-to-face -face exam, you don't need to examine your patient. Rather, you should ask examination finding from your examiner. There are uh, solely physical examination cases you will get in the clinical exam. That time you have to perform, okay? Yes, you need to give the reason for differential diagnosis. In here, the reason is needle sharing. Okay. Do you discuss differential after PEFE? Yes. Uh, just follow the steps. So your first steps, um, it would be history, then physical examination finding from the examiner, differential diagnosis. I know you all, like most of the candidates here are beginner or just passed their MCQ exam. So MCQ and clinical is a bit different. You need to know the format. And Dr. Arshan will discuss you all the um, cluster-wise approach along with the format. I'm going to discuss with you all the random cases, which you will get in the, uh, most likely in your exam, okay? Okay, so move to the next case. Uh, next will be Dr. Ati, I think. Uh, sorry, is Atika? Dr. Atika, are you there? Dr. Atika, can you hear me? Hello, doctor. Um, the next will be Dr. Abdul, are you there? Uh, yes, Dr. Uh, I'm trying to talk. Dr. Atika, I, I couldn't hear you. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. 
Hello, Dr. Cynthia. My name is Atika here. Hi. Uh, this is your case, and you'll get two minute time for this case, okay? Okay, thank you. So your two minutes starts now. All right. Uh, you can start. Dr. Atika, can you hear me? Hello. I think she has some network issues, so. Hello, can you hear yeah. me now, Dr. Cindy? I'm sorry, I got muted again somehow. Okay, sure. So let's right. start. Okay, I can start now, yeah. So your Hello. patient yep. uh, name is Jesse and patient mom name is Julia. Okay. So I'm, am I taking the history from the mom? Yeah. Okay, all right. Hello, Julia. Uh, good morning. My name is Atika. I'm one of the doctors here and I'm looking after Jesse today. So how are you, Julia? And how's Jesse doing? I'm okay, doctor, but I'm concerned about my daughter, Jesse. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I, I can understand as a mom, you must be concerned about your daughter. Uh, can you tell me what concerns you about her the most these days? Uh, doctor, I just a call. I got a call from her school and her teacher mentioned that uh, she's not doing well at her school, doctor. Oh, okay. Must be concerning for you. Mm -hmm. um, so um, has this ever happened before or is this a new thing for her? Was she going good at school? Yeah, previously it was fine. Doctor, her school performance was okay. Okay. And how long has this concern been going on for? Um, teacher mentioned that few weeks, I think. A few weeks. Okay. Yeah. okay. And um, have you noticed any change in her behavior along with this decline in performance? Uh, like what, doctor? 
um, like any change, uh, maybe like she feel depressed these days if she's um, having any low mood? No. No, okay. Um, has, she, um, has she been eating and sleeping well these days? Yeah, I think so. Okay, all right. Um, and um, has there been any change in the pattern of eating maybe these days? She's 14 years old, and girls do get concerned about their parents sometimes. So how is she eating these days? Mm, I think it's okay, doctor. That's doctor uh, she, you know, she's 14 years and she's eating by herself. So yeah, I'm like, okay. I know it's okay. And I understand from the notes that she's been diagnosed with cystic fibrosis um, since the age of five years. So um, has she been um, taking any medications for the condition? Uh, yes, doctor. Okay. Um, can I ask you what medications are these? Uh, she's taking some supplement, I think. Uh, I forget the name. Mm -hmm. So uh, is she managing her medication by herself? Yeah. Okay. So do you think that she's uh, compliant? She's taking them regularly or not? Um, I'm not sure, doctor, because uh, she's taking care of her medication. Okay, okay, that's understandable. And uh, what about any symptoms of having uh, repeated chest infections these days? Any cough, any fever? Um, I noticed, doctor, uh, she's having cough, but no fever. I'm not sure about it. Okay, is she having any difficulty with breathing with the cough? Um, she didn't mention me. Okay, okay. And has she mentioned ever uh, having chest pain, particularly? No, no. no? Okay. And um, any bronchodilators she might be on? Any buffers that she's taking? She's on, uh, yeah, she's taking buffer here. Yeah. Okay, all right. And um, that uh, you might not be sure if she's consistently taking them or not. Okay. Mm. Um, about the gut, um, is she having any diarrhea at the moment? No, doctor. Any nausea or vomiting she might be complaining of? No. Okay. At any time, has she complained of any tummy pain? No. Okay. Have you noticed any change in her weather preference lately? No, doctor. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, has she lost any weight or appetite? Mm, I'm not sure, doctor. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Um, and. Um, well, um, a little bit about her birth. Was everything okay around the delivery and the birth itself? Yeah. Okay. Uh, is she immunized up to now? Yes, doctor. Any concerns about her growth and development so far? No. Okay. All right. And um, any uh, family history of any other conditions, uh, any uh, genetic conditions other than cystic fibrosis? No, doctor. Okay. Um, thank you for all this information. Um, uh, just one more question. If she is, um, yeah, that's fine. All right. So I have a few charts with me, um, actually two charts that are showing um, her growth. And also one of the chart is for um, one of the values of the lung function test. So I'll explain these to you, um, Julia. So the chart growth chart actually is showing that there has been some decline in her growth over a period of some time, um, which um, to me is most likely because of the condition that she's having, cystic fibrosis, and um, apparently she might not be very consistent with her medications and she, it not might be under control. So that's the reason a child would not grow normally because this condition, um, do you know anything about cystic fibrosis? Um, it's a lung condition, doctor. Yeah, yep, yeah, definitely. Uh, I'll explain it to you uh, a little bit more in detail. Uh, let's talk about the other uh, uh, value that we have for her, which is um, forced expiratory volume in the first one second for her age. I'm sorry to use the jargons here, but this is actually a value that we are looking at when we look at uh, somebody's lungs function. And for her, this value is actually reduced. That means her lungs are not actually functioning normally and she's having difficulty uh, with her breathing. Um, that's why she might be having this cough. And because of these, um, this condition, that's also um, um, like um, because of the cystic fibrosis, I'll explain it to you. And because of these two conditions, she's not um, growing normally and there's a decline in her school performance. That's the most likely cause because of uncontrolled cystic fibrosis. Are you with me so far, Julia? Yes, doctor. 
Yeah, so um, what I'm concerned about is that um, cystic fibrosis is not being under control. I'll explain it to you. Uh, this is a condition, a genetic condition, where, where there is increased sticky secretions in the body, most likely in the, in the lungs, which give rise to um, coughing and difficulty breathing, and there's chances of repeated chest infections. And the same thing happens in the gut when there's increased secretions. There would be a chance of um, the digestion would not be normal. There, there could be signs and symptoms of... Um, intestinal obstruction. There could be um, yep, uh, pain in the tummy and um, yep, symptoms like that. So um, this is uh, what is uh, most likely happening with her. And the decline in the school performance is most likely because of cystic fibrosis. Other than that, there could have been other problems with a girl 14 years old. There could have been some um, uh, problems with her eating. There could be um, uh, problems with the um, uh, iron deficiency anemia, there could have been some malabsorption syndromes like celiac disease, but there's no history of diarrhea here, and she's eating fine as well. There could have been a condition called hypothyroidism, where a, um, a gland in her neck uh, called thyroid is not functioning normally, but she does not have any symptoms of those from the history as well. I was also concerned about any infections currently going on, but she does not have any fever. And um, also it could have been because of some stresses going on at school or at home. Um, yep, so um, yep, these are all my differentials, but most likely this is because of an uncontrolled cystic fibrosis. Are you with me so far, Julia? Do you have any questions for me? Anything else that I need to know, Doctor? Um, do I have one second now? Okay, so... Yep, that's all for me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you have still 10 seconds. Uh, yep. Dr. Atika, very nice performance. It was really excellent, I would say. Uh, few mm -hmm. things, I would tell you like very minor thing you missed, but your performance was excellent. Okay, just keep it up. Um, and other candidate, you also noticed that uh, Dr. Atika, like try to cover most of the things and her approach, everything was really nice, okay? So one thing you missed, Dr. Atika, that is uh, you didn't ask parents any school bullying history or any mm -hmm. social factor. That means um, like, um, are you guys happy family, any stress at home, especially like a single mom or any recent changes, um, any, any event in the family, like, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, that's what I uh, wanted to ask in the in the initial phases of the history when I asked mm -hmm. her if there's any change in behavior. But do I need to like um, exactly say the word bullying? Yeah, specifically, specifically, you should ask about any history of bullying and okay. do you know about uh, her friend, any issue with the friend. You should ask about those things and uh, um, uh, like, uh, does she happy to go to the school or not? You should ask those things. Another okay. thing is that... Uh, any recent changes in the family, okay? Are you guys happy family, any stress, anything that I need to know? Those, those social things you missed. Another uh, very minor, what I feel like, when you explain the diagnosis differential, try to involve your patient, okay? Otherwise, it was excellent. Your performance was nice. Uh, one candidate asked, uh, do you get uh, the chart, growth chart and FEV1 chart? Look, sometimes in the STEM, they are mentioning the result. You, you will get only the result. Sometimes you will get the chart. So it depends. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's discuss the case. You are a GP, Julia, a, a patient, 14 years old girl came to you with her mom. And mom has some concern because she got a phone call from the teacher. And teacher mentioned that Julia's, uh, sorry, Jesse's school performance declined. Um, and JC has a background history of cystic fibrosis since she was five years. And there are two charts given. Uh, one chart showing that decline growth and another is reduced FEV1 for her age. So your task is history. Explain the chart and address the mom concern and your task is diagnosis differential. So in this case, if you will get chart or you will get the result, anyway, you need to explain the findings to the mom, okay? Mm -hmm. So um, introduce yourself, um, like 
Hi, I'm Dr. X. I'm one of the doctors working in this hospital or in the GP clinic. Whatever you mention in this team, you should address that one. Um, I'll be looking after your uh, like daughter today. Do you have any specific concern? Uh, so you will get the concern. Um, now, history, you need to ask about... Uh, um, as you mentioned that uh, Julia's uh, JC's school performance uh, recently declined. So how long is this going on? Okay, is it uh, something recent or newly changed or like uh, that thing happened for a long time? Okay, any other particular concern and uh, how about the Julia's, uh, sorry, how about JC's uh, friend? Any history of bullying in the his, uh, school, you need to ask. How about the social history? That means the, um, any issue with the family, you need to ask it specifically, okay? Are you guys happy family? Now coming to the question, uh, other history, because uh, two things you got from the stem, that is growth decline and also AFEB1 reduced. That means you should ask about details, chest related question and details, weight loss history, okay? Uh, you all notice that Dr. Atiya asked me very nice question like about proper diet history, bowel habit question, any diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, those questions, okay? So in the history, starting with the history of, um, is starting with the cystic fibrosis. So JC has been diagnosed with cystic fibrosis since the age of five um, and uh, how it goes, okay? Um, any follow-up, any recent JC infection, any recent hospitalization, how about the vaccine, any loose motion, any medication he, uh, she's taking, any angine, vitamin supplement, those things. and who is taking care of her medication. That is really important question, okay? Any prophylactic antibiotic, any other medication she's on, okay? Um, any changes in her life, you should ask. Um, as I mentioned, how's the home situation recently? Uh, weight loss question, is she eating well? What kind of food uh, does she like? Any recurrent diarrhea? and anyone complain that she's looking pale, okay? Because of cystic fibrosis can cause malabsorption, uh, you should ask details about those questions, okay? Uh, so here, most likely the diagnosis is non-compliance with the medication. Because of the non-compliance, because daughter JC, she's taking care of her medicine. Um, and um, she's non-compliant with the medicine. That's why like uh, she has uh, FEV1 reduced, okay? And also complain about short of breath or uh, cough. Uh, she's not taking her medication regularly, uh, one of the reason. Another reason, it could be depression, but less likely. That's why you should ask about uh, JC's mood as well, okay? How's about JC's mood? And, uh, does she enjoy the thing that used to do before, you should ask. Um, depression, it might be, but less likely. But, uh, any malabsorption problem that can cause weight loss. And it could be reduced intake or malnutrition, okay? Other thing, it could be infection, thyroid issue, those in uh, differential you can mention, okay? Uh, management, not your task. If management will come, you should mention about the normal, regular chest physiotherapy. Uh, you should advise to take regular medication, regular enzyme supplement. And you should refer this patient back to the respiratory physician, back to the um, dietitian as well. Okay, so they are going to assess and they are going to monitor the lung function as well. But management, not your task, so don't need to worry about it. That's the case for cystic fibrosis and poor school performance, okay?
vaccine she might require yes but again uh, it will come under management okay what about the chances of pregnancy um, If uh, mom asks you what is cystic fibrosis, that time you need to explain it. Just the uh, cystic fibrosis that is the inherited disease and that involves the lungs and digestive system. You can mention, but there is another case where you have to explain details about cystic fibrosis counseling case. Okay, it's not a this case is not a cystic fibrosis counseling case. It's a case of poor school performance and background of cystic fibrosis. Okay, so the last case, who will be doing the last case? Dr. Farshid. Yeah. Hello. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you for letting me talk to, uh, uh, letting me to try. Thanks. So this is your case and your two minute research now. Thank you. Um, just uh, may I ask a question? Um, is it STEM and the task related? Yeah, actually, uh, I did not get one part of that. Uh, head circumference is at 98 percentile, but uh, is there any fall in that or not? It is uh, no, actually, it's not showing that, that falls are for the weight. Head circumference 98 percentile and weight chart at 50 percentile. Okay, but um, what about this? The three plots fall in this percentile. 
you check three times and uh, it showed 98 percent out. Oh, okay. Okay, that's like three plots okay. have done and all pl um, plot showing that it's 98 percent out. Okay, so you can start. Hello, uh, this is uh, Dr. Farshid. Uh, I'm uh, one of the GPs in this practice. Uh, from the notes, I can see that uh, uh, you brought you uh, today for to vaccinate your uh, um, your child. So, and also there is a concern about uh, your child. Uh, actual growth. Am I right? Um, yes, Dr. Nurse told me something about um, my boy's head. And you yourself, uh, do you also have any uh, particular concern? No, more than what uh, nurse? No, I'm just here no. for the vaccine, but nurse told me that my boss, Liam, um, his head is big, and that's why nurse is really concerned. What's okay. wrong with this doctor? Okay, I'm going to explain it. These are the uh, actually charts that we uh, plot um, the head circumference, weight, and uh, length to check the uh, children uh, growth. Um, um, just uh, we want to uh, make sure that everything is uh, uh, good and the, the uh, rate of growing is normal. Okay, first um, um, I want to ask about uh, your child. Uh, is it he or she? Liam Boy, doctor. Liam Boy, okay. Is uh, um, Actually, just uh, regarding your um, pregnancy, uh, was it a normal pregnancy or was there any particular problem? Any normal. And uh, a cesarean section or normal vaginal normal um, delivery? Vaginal. Normal vaginal delivery, okay. And any uh, problem while delivery? use of any forceps or vacuum or... no doctor okay and uh, do you know whether uh, it was needed to resuscitate your child at the time of delivery no to... okay so and uh, what about after that was there any problem in the last uh, six months any particular disease, hospitalization, or need to start any medication? No, doctor. Okay, so uh, is she eating and drinking well? Yes. Yeah. Is, is he eating and drinking well? Okay, yeah. And uh, what about uh, uh, her, uh, his uh, nappy changes, poo and pee, how many times a day? Nappy, uh, like five to six times. Five to six times. Okay. And uh, how do you feed uh, your baby? Uh, doctor, uh, now I started solid. Um, Solid and did you breastfeed or uh, bottle feed? Uh, feed bottle. Her? bottle feeding. Bottle feeding. Okay. May I ask what was the cause of that? For that. Uh, why you did you start to bottle feed him? Is was there any problem with your? Uh, it's it was your preference or there was any problem with the amount of uh, uh, breast milk no doctor it's my preference your preference okay may i ask about uh, your home situation uh, home situation 
Okay. So, uh, with whom do you live? Is any partner? Yes, doctor. I'm living with my husband. Okay. Is he supportive? Yes. Good. And is there any financial problem? No. No financial problem. Okay. And how is your mood? My mood is okay, doctor. Good. Okay. So, and is he update with his vaccine? Yes. Okay. Are you taking any uh, medicine yourself? No, doctor. No problem. Okay. Uh, may I ask about uh, physical examination findings? Yes, you can ask. So first of all, I want to uh, uh, be aware of uh, the child uh, truly uh, vital signs. Vital signs are normal. Especially temperature, all normal. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, um, the most important thing, I want to recheck uh, the... Um, head circumference, weight, and height to make sure that there is no uh, problem with the previous measurement. Head circumference at 98 centile and with which uh, at it's 50 centile. The weight was 98, 58th percentile? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, and uh, actually I want to uh, go for to head to toe examination, but the most uh, pro um, important thing for me uh, is actually the um, chest, heart, and abdomen. What do you want to know? Is there any uh, added sound of uh, adventitious uh, sound in the chest examination? No. Any abnormal? Uh, added a heart sound? No. Is the tummy, is the abdomen uh, actually um, soft? Yes. And uh, no abnormality in the axiom, uh, no organomegaly? No. Okay, so, uh, and may I, uh, do I have access to the previous uh, charts? It's on the same. No change in the weight? Uh, no. And uh, the, okay. So um, the, um, may I go for the, uh, Diagnose, uh, diagnosis and differentials? Sure, your time's up. So, okay, what's, your, okay. uh, what's your diagnosis, Dr. Farshi? Pardon me? What's your diagnosis and differential? Uh, actually, it seems there is no uh, problem with the feeding. So, I'm thinking about the, the, any problem with the head, if there is any uh, hydrocephaly is uh, my first diagnosis. Okay. Any other so, differentials? Uh, regarding the differentials, uh, actually, any... Uh, when my, uh, my, uh, any space occupying lesion of the okay. head? Very good differential, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, it, so let's finish in here. Um, your performance was uh, nice, Dr. Farshid. You tried to ask me this important question. Uh, you asked me about uh, babies, old baby question, um, birth related question, immunization history, everything you asked. That was really nice. Uh, physical examination, uh, it was okay, but try to be more specific when you were asking from your examiner. Diagnosis yes. differential, here you didn't get any positive finding. So think about like normal thing. It could be normal variant, okay? Uh, like macrocephaly, but 
uh, like it's a benign condition. And other uh, differential you mentioned, it could be stress occupying lesion, it could be hydrocephalus, those are infection. Other thing you can mention, okay. Um, nice performance, Dr. Farshid. Uh, very small advice that is, um, you need to, you know, um, just uh, you need to be more speedy, otherwise, you cannot manage with time. Okay. Thank you uh, for your yeah so and feedback just uh do role play as much as you can okay if you are doing yes more, more and more so it will come your speed will come automatically okay yeah that's yeah. that's right actually this is my performance the first performance thank you whatever is it, it was fine okay so let's discuss the case Six months old infant uh, brought in by mom in your GP practice for their routine vaccination and prior to vaccine, nurse checked uh, the baby and nurse not noted that there is discrepancy between head circumference or weight chart as well. Head circumference, uh, she checked and uh, put in the three plots and each plot showing that 98 centile, weight chart 50 centile, which is normal, but head circumference is the big one, okay? So your task is history, PV, diagnosis, and differential. What could be your differential regarding the big head, okay? Like where uh, babies or infant head circumference is uh, bigger compared to the normal side. Uh, there could be many uh, differential, but important differential, it might be like familial or like benign um, macrocephaly. It might be hydrocephalus. It might be any infection, space occupying lesion, any other neurological problem as well, okay? So starting with the history, definitely introduce yourself nicely, ask mom any specific concern, then ask about growth and development. Here, growth and development, according to the six month infant, uh, Ask mom, what do you think your child according to the age? Are you happy with that? Uh, do you have any specific concern? You should ask, okay? Uh, then uh, for this child actually, uh, six month child, you need to ask specifically about the uh, growth. So you should ask about either your child can sit, okay? or uh, like can sit without support. You should ask about that um, question, okay? I will tell you about growth and developmental question. Um, then you should ask about fever and infection, any recent infection, any recent fever. Well, baby question. So this is another structure for pediatrics topic, okay? Definitely Dr. Arshan will discuss all of you the new, Mm, candidate, what is well baby question? So well baby question, you should ask about all pediatric cases. Well baby question, how about the baby feeding? How about the sleeping? Nappy number and the bowel habit. That is the four well baby question. And also baby is activatable or drowsy. Those those also well baby question. Bind smile, bind smile is a pneumonia. You should ask for all the pets cases. So B for BART, I for immunization, N for nutrition, D for development, S for like social history, M for mitigation, A for allergies. So that's BITESMA, another structure you should ask for all the PEDS cases, okay? Um, so general health question, any history of brain or nervous system trauma, uh, you should ask any infection during the pregnancy that your child could develop, okay? Um, that lead to hydrocephalus and ask about any recent baby's vomiting, any increased irritability, any sign of headache, any unusual behavior because any floppiness you should ask, okay? To rule out there is no space occupying lesion or there is no neurological issues. Uh, any history of Caesar, you should also ask about it, okay? Then um, pregnancy, as I mentioned, you should ask the mom any, uh, during the pregnancy, any infection, any medication you are taking, uh, compliance, any smoking history to the mom, how 
how was your pregnancy with him? How about the delivery? Was it a normal delivery uh, term, preterm, any caesarean section? Okay. After the delivery, any resuscitation needed, you should ask. Uh, then you should ask about immunization history. Immunization is up to date or not. Uh, you should ask about uh, uh, nutrition development question. Um, then you should ask about what are works, about having those questions. Okay. Rule out any developmental delay. So developmental delay, there are few developmental delay that will come in your uh, exam, clinical exam, that is global developmental delay or cerebral palsy. Another is congenital hypothyroidism as well. Okay, so you should rule out those uh, developmental delay question. That's why you need to ask about um, any epilepsy, feed, jerky movement, um, any vision, hearing issue, any injury to the back, um, any headache, but that is six months, it's really tough. You can ask about increased irritability or crying. Okay, how about the home situation? Family history, you should have. Uh, past medical, surgical history, medication, and any family history of similar type of problem, especially um, like big head. Any other sibling or mom or dad having history of like big head or similar condition, you should ask. Okay. Now, guys, as I mentioned, at the beginning, you should ask about growth and development. So, growth and development, you need to ask a specific question. Here, baby is six month old infant. In six month old infant, to save your time, you should ask specifically what development or milestone he or she can achieve okay so six month gross motor you should ask about do you notice your baby uh, is he starting to sit without support or with support you should ask fine motor you can ask about transfer the object okay another thing is that social you can ask like do you notice your child can recognize you or making eye contact okay and your child can do babbling, you should ask. That is language. So that milestone question you should ask for the growth and development, okay? Physical examination, physical examination head to toe, but time is limited. You should focus more on general appearance. In general appearance, there is a structure, okay? You should ask about any um, pallor, any jaundice, dehydration, those questions, along with any dysmorphic feature that uh, you notice, especially uh, Down syndrome, dysmorphic feature you can ask, and uh, child is active, irritable, or drowsy, you should ask. Vital sign, growth chart is important, any neck abnormalities, um, those things you need to ask. Quickly, cardiovascular respiratory abdomen examination, you can ask to the mom and office, uh, sorry, you can ask to the examiner and office test, okay? Physical examination, basically, you need to ask to your examiner. So for that format, you will get in your theory class how you need to ask physical examination from examiner for the PEDS cases, okay? So my diagnosis here is the big head, or macrocephaly. So macrocephaly, you can mention uh, when the head circumference uh, is bigger compared to the normal level, okay? Causes, there could be many reasons. It might be benign familial macrocephaly. In your child case, I am thinking it's the most probable diagnosis because I haven't noticed any, any abnormal findings in the history, physical examination, everything is normal. So I'm suspecting it's just a benign familial macrocephaly or big head, which is inherited, okay? Other thing it could be if inside the brain, if there is excessive fluid in it, we call it like hydrocephalus, okay? It might be one of the reason, but hydrocephalus baby, you might get the symptoms, okay? 
So if your child is not showing signs, symptom of increased intracranial pressure, okay, like any unusual eye movement, projectile vomiting, irritability, high pitch cry, sloppy, those things, definitely we need to make a follow-up appointment or we need to refer this patient to the pediatric neurosurgeon to confirm the diagnosis. But in the history, I didn't get any abnormal finding. Okay. Other cause, it could be infection, but less likely there is no fever, no rash, no other uh, sick person contact. Okay. So macrocephaly is um, it's an uncommon condition. And uh, when we need to refer this patient, if you have seen any recent rapid head growth, bulging any vein on your child head, developmental delay, eye problem, sloppy, any neurological symptom, that patient need to be referred immediately, okay? But in your child case, I feel like it's mostly benign familial macrocephaly. Okay. Causes of macrocephaly, like it might be hydrocephalus, overgrowth of the skull bone, any brain tumor, stress occupying lesion, any uh, infection, genetic disorder. Okay. So those are your differential. Management, not your task, so don't need to worry about it. Your task is only history, physical examination, diagnosis, and differential. So this case is a benign familial macrocephaly. Okay. Okay, so... I put in my slide details about macrocephaly. You can have a look, okay? Any question for this case? Yeah, one baby question. You should ask about how the baby is feeding. Baby sleeping okay or not? Any issue with the pee? Any issues with the poo? Baby is active, alert, or drowsy? You should ask. Okay, that is the old baby question. You should ask for each and every pet's cases for clinical. Dysmorphy feature basically you need to ask to the examiner. So examiner, can I appreciate any dysmorphy feature of Down syndrome? Okay, you need to ask it specifically uh, so that your examiner will give you finding. Any dysmorphic feature of any like uh, congenital hypothyroidism as well, you can ask. Uh, do you need to do neurological exam as well? Yes, for neurological examination for the baby, you should ask about the reflex. That's it. Okay, and um, neurological examination, you can ask about any eye, any eye abnormalities and can I appreciate any abnormal reflex, any tone. Because of the baby, we are not going for power check, no need for sensation. We are just checking the tone and the reflex. Okay. Down gate, uh, down, downward gaze eye you will get for any space of lesion increase intracranial uh, pressure that time. Okay, so that's all for today's random role play session. I know guys, like it's uh, really overwhelming for you, especially for the beginner. Uh, but honestly, like when you already know all the structure, uh, how to take history for the medicine cases, how to take history for the peer psychiatric case, physical examination finding, counseling, when you have the structure, I'm pretty sure you will really like this 
uh, random cases. Random case is important for your exam, okay? Because in your exam, you will get exactly like this type of case. In your exam, they are not going to mention you, this case came from medicine, this case came from surgery. They are not going to mention it. You will get 16 cases in your exam and you will get it randomly, okay? And don't worry, everyone uh, will pass if you are uh, following the structure, if you have good study partner, if you are doing role play as much as you can, okay? Just you have to be consistent, that's it. It's not difficult, it's a doable exam. Any question uh, regarding today's random uh, role play session, you can ask to Dr. Arshan. All right, so thank you, Dr. Cynthia, for your nice class. I, I'm sure that you guys enjoyed it. So how did you guys go with this session tonight? Any question about our role play sessions? Now, as I said initially, that this is a part of the five months course that, that we, are, we have already started. And you know that the course is supposed to start from 30th of November, but because we have taken a little bit gap in between. So most likely what we are going to do that your first class of the five month session will be counted from today. So from 11th of December. So that's how usually we, we are going to take our sessions. So you will also see tomorrow when I will, I will take the cardiology session. The cardiology session will, will give you an idea about the structure that Dr. Cynthia was talking about. So it means that you will have an idea how to take a history in, in terms of medicine, okay? So come and join us to, uh, tomorrow night as well and have a look at how we, how we do the cluster-wise classes. That's the, the basic of your exam preparation. And once you know about those, the, the random sessions becomes very easy and it becomes interesting as well, okay? So, if you guys don't have any questions, that's, that's all good. And then we can, I will go through the course details again, maybe tomorrow as well, but let's just go through the, the class and course discussion a little bit so that you guys have an idea. I can see still there's a lot of you who has some questions about it and that's not very unusual. So you will have questions, but we're, we're here to answer any specific questions that you might have. Yes, you will have other classes on psychiatry also. Psychiatry, I think we have just taken two classes. There's just one cluster, which is the mental status exam. We also have four more classes on psychiatry, okay? Any question about the course? Otherwise, if you don't have any questions, we can just go through the course contents and if you have any any anything that you want to know just just let me know so as you know that this is a five months course which already has been started you guys are actually doing the course classes at the moment in in our one week we have three sessions and the the class time is usually 8 or 8 30 p.m sydney time the saturday sunday and wednesday are our usual classes Sunday will be taken by Dr. Cynthia, just like this random session. And Saturday, Wednesday will be taken by me. And we will mainly go through the theory sessions along with theory role plays, okay? And the course will include almost everything that you can actually ask for in a course. So which will include the full theory, theory-based role play. You will get one year recent case discussions with role play, just like how we did today. With that, there are, we have already taken the last three years role play feedbacks, which means you will get the videos of those role play sessions as well, which is like a, 
I'm sure that no one has got that much collection of cages. So you will get all those three years, which will cover at least 150 to 300 cages. And those are very, very high yield for your exam. And we, you guys have an idea already that we take one role play session every week. You will get access to the video recordings. It's a prolonged access even after the course is finished, which means that usually most of you will be able to appear at the exam with that, with that recording access as well. And it becomes very easier for you to go through the cages even after the course is done. You will get one month classes on physical examination solely. And that's, that's one of the best one month that you will get with us. And we are, we are very good with the physical examinations. You might have heard from others. You get online mini mock exams, usually six weekly. You get full access to the notes until you pass. You also will get sessions on job offers, registration, CV writing, pathways and everything. You can claim 150 hours of CPD with these classes. We will go through that in our orientation session in detail. And also you always get an extensive classes on the communication and approach, which is the vital core of passing this exam. You might be a very knowledgeable doctor. You might have a lot of experience, but the approach and, and communication is, is the core of this exam. That's, that's a lot of candidates are lacking about. So if you can learn that approach, which Australia likes, then it becomes, your preparation becomes 30% done just by that, that particular approach, okay? So that's all that the course is gonna cover. I'm sure that all of you will like it. I mean, it, you will love it. So you can see our course feedbacks and everything, and you can see our results as well, which shows the hard works that our mentors do, does and also our students does. So hopefully everything will go, go as, as prepared and as expected. Any questions about the course? Anything that you want to know about? Okay, so that's how it's going to happen. And if you, do, if you have any questions, then just ask me in the next one, uh, in the next two free week sessions, right? So you have got the schedules and everything. Just make sure you ask questions at that time. The course enrollment has already become available. So I can see that a lot of students has already been en enrolled. So if you are liking these sessions and you have an idea that you want to join, then start the process, okay? The course will, will end in, so it's a five months course, which means just Find out like what's the five months. So if we are starting in December, then April will be our, will be your course ending month. And the physical examination usually happens after two months of starting the course. So around early February, you will get your physical examination. Okay. So that should be all for tonight then. I hope that you guys are liking the sessions and have a good night and a steady heart. If you already have enrolled the sessions and enrolled the course, make sure you start, start reading these classes, start going through these pages that you have already have got from us and also start reading the handbook. Handbook is a vital part of your exam preparation. At least start those things, you will get a lot of ideas. And Dr. Zainab, the outline means that, as I say, that everything will be discussed, which means whatever it ca can come in your exam, everything will be discussed. So the outline in a, in a summary, we, we will discuss about medicine, pediatrics, surgery, gynae, obstetrics, physical examination. So almost everything. So, and you get, a, and you get the sessions detail after enrollment of the course, but as a whole, the, our, our portal has everything there. You can also go through our website and just go through our topic details and everything. It's been, it's been in our website. So if you are in our first aid AMC clinical group, 
in the Facebook, you can also just find out that website details. So in the website, we have everything written very clearly. Please go through that as well if you want. And I think in our Facebook group, we, we post our course details in a summary. But if you want to know the detail of it, there is, there is one thing like a course review, course overview link. If you go through that course overview link, you will get everything. How will online mock exams work? How the online exams are working? That's exactly how the online mock exams will work. But those are mini mock exams, not like a not full mock exam. So we can't take full mock exams in our course, but those are mini mock exams. But we do take full mock exams as well. And if, we, if any of you are interested, you can always enroll to those as well. All right, so that should be for tonight. Have a good night. I, I know that it's already quite late night in, in Australia. So have a good night, sleep. Any questions, come and talk to me tomorrow. And, and the Zoom ID and password is same like tonight's session. So you can just join how you joined today. Okay. Take care. Have a good night.